Hello everybody, my name is Jacob and welcome back to my channel. I'm a software developer by trade and I hope to bring you guys some useful information and tips that you can use in your own coding journeys. If you enjoy the video, please hit the like button. It really helps me get these videos out to as many people as possible. And if you're interested in more of what I have to say, then please hit that subscribe button and notification bell to keep up to date with my content. Now that we have that out of the way, we can kind of get started here. So today we're going to be talking about what I consider a better way to structure your unit test within a file. I usually have one unit test file per class, so we're just going to be looking at one particular unit test file. So if we go into this just example class right here, it's called text validator. We have a couple static lists of valid input, and we have a couple methods that just simply take in the input and return if the list contains it. So pretty straightforward to test. Um, we just have test the trues, test the false, and then we have those for both methods. But the first thing you notice here and the thing that I don't like, so the problem I was wanting to solve is how long these method names are. We have to have the context in here. We have to have what it should return and when it should return that before we even get to actually testing. And additionally, I find once we get to a certain size, like this one isn't too bad. It is a little difficult to see what goes with what method, but it's only, you know, what, five tests right here. If we had 30, 40 tests in here, it would get pretty difficult to find where we're trying to go. So with that context in mind, the way we're going to solve this and the key to this concept really is reducing the length of these names and then also organizing them based on what method they're testing. And you ask, how are you going to do that? Well, we're going to abstract the context of the test name out of the test name and into a class. Because this context is repeated right here for every single one of these. So there's no really reason that we can't just bring these up to another level. So the first thing we're going to look at is we went over the class right here. So just let's just look at it in action right here. We just have where we knew it up right here. We call it with a couple valid inputs and we show that yes is true. No is true. Indeed is false. You know, we've called everything on here and we don't test the robot one, but this is just to get the point across that this works, right? So here's what it looks like in the test explorer. If we run all the tests here. Oh uh, yeah, go for it. Oh no. So if we look in the test explorer here, sorry, I don't know. My telecode is popping up there. Um, we can see that we have text validator tests as our top level for the class we're testing. And then we have a long list of every method and there are the long method names that we were just talking about. So let's just jump right into solving this. What we wanna do here is create a new unit test file. Let's go right here. Let's name it uh, improved text validator tests okay so we're gonna have pretty similar setup to this so you know I might just go ahead bring over these and I'll show you what we're looking at when we get over there because what we're doing in the class is gonna stay the same it's just the structure that's going to change so we want to pull this over We want to get all our using statements in. I'm using in unit, by the way. Um, this I've used this with MS test before, and I believe I've used it with X unit before, and it works the same. There's it shows up a little differently in the test explorer for the different ones, but um, in unit's my favorite testing framework, so we're gonna go with this. Okay, so we have the system under test as a top level private read only variable up here, and then let's start with what we're trying to test, the validate user input. So if we notice that these three are the same for all of these, the first part of the name, so that's what we can abstract out here. So let's go ahead and make another class, just an inner class in here. And we're gonna name it validate user input should return, and it's going to inherit 
improve text validator test. So we can just drag these three and then bring those right here. And then we don't need the first part of this anymore. So if you can see what I did, I just took that context that was in all three of these and moved it up here. We still have access to the system under test because it's in the parent class. And then the another added benefit of this is if this method needed you to new up some dependency or inject some different dependency in through it, you would be able to do that in the constructor for this class right here. So, you know, you could have something more like this where test var is, you know, test value. And then whatever you need right there, you could do in the constructor here and the other classes wouldn't have access to it. So that can help separate um, jobs like that. So let's go ahead and do the same thing with this. So we want to grab this right here, validate robot input should return. And we're gonna make another public class that inherits improved validator tests. And then we're gonna pull down these two tests. We're gonna throw them in there and then we can remove the context out of there. And if you remember what this looks like right here, you'll see that we have a couple extra ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the unit tests. And then, so you can see these text validator tests right here. It's one file that has, or it's sorry, one top level node that has five in there and it can get kind of hard to read. But with this one, you have improved text validator tests and then it's split by method right here. You can, if you only want to look at the robot test, you can easily drop this down and look at false, true and pass boot. You can look at false when pass valid input. And I just find that a lot easier to look at personally than just these five, same level, but they're testing different methods. And I find this extremely useful as well when I'm testing overloaded methods because those can really start to look the same, especially with the uh, method names being longer, you're saying what you're passing in to get to the other method. This can really help you separate those out when you're writing unit tests. And then going over both files, you know, kind of side by side, let's go ahead and grab these over. So we have the text validator test right here. We just see five top level tests, you know, extract this out, the same concept out. We have 50 of these, you know, um, it can be a lot easier to drop down the ones you don't need here. And then you're just looking at your top level validate user input should return, validate robot input should return. If we just want to look here, we easily have all three of these. That's all we got for today. Thank you guys for watching. Again, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe for more content like this. And for our topic of the day, please let me know down in the comments how often do you guys actually write unit tests versus how often do you feel like you should be writing unit tests. I'm curious to hear what everyone says. And until next time.